Hello and welcome to, the, to today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to get started here in a moment. Today's session, we're going to be going over how to invest solo 401k funds in real estate, which is a very uh, popular topic. So hopefully you find this useful. It sounds like the uh, audio is working well. So we'll get started. I'll invite everyone to please uh, ask questions in our chat and I'll go through the questions as you as we go through the slides. I'll answer those questions right here. If you're watching this on a video, a recorded video, you can ask questions in the comments as we respond to those uh, right away within one business day. So please like this video as well. We'd really appreciate that. Please subscribe for more videos like this as you'll get notifications of our weekly sessions. We do them every week. So let's go over the roadmap of where we're headed. So in this session, the focus again is going to be talking about how to invest solo 401k funds in foreign real estate. So we're going to go over the steps as well as special considerations and practical tips. And then finally, how you can get more information about your situation. So let's dive right in. And again, please don't hesitate to ask questions as we go through it. So the a key concept to understand here is that whether we're talking about investing in domestic or U.S. real estate or whether we're talking about investing in foreign real estate, really the, the, the core steps and the core rules are going to be the same. So you'll see that as we go through this slide. So it's helpful to start off with just those core and basic steps. So really the first step is that you need to, of course, have a solo 401k, which allows you to invest in real estate. So for example, our IRS approved plan does allow you to invest in real estate. You need to be eligible, right? So you need to be self-employed where you're where you are earning money based off of your self-employment, self-employed business. You don't have any full-time W-2 employees working for you. You next need to fund that account. So, you know, you would get started with us. You'd set up our IRS approved plan. We'd get you set up with an account. We'd handle the rollover. So you need to have money that's either in a former employer plan or a non-Roth IRA or money that you are contributing from your self-employed income, or it could be all of the above. So the money would roll over into that self-directed account where you have checkbook control. You then would put the offer together, the contract, right? So we, even though we are, you know, we specialize in helping people use their retirement money to invest in real estate, including foreign real estate, you know, we don't give you investment advice. So you go out there, you find the property that you want to invest in. So you put together the offer, the contract, you negotiate with the seller. So it needs to be an unrelated person or entity that owns that property. And so, you know, you would negotiate as the trustee of the plan on behalf of the 401k. You then would put down the deposit. So the deposit would need to come from that 401k account. And then you would go through the, the standard closing process, right? So there would be a closing. You then, the, and then at the closing, the real estate is then transferred from the seller to the 401k. So it would be titled in the name of the 401k like XYZ solo 401k trust, or you would be signing as John Smith, trustee of XYZ solo 401k trust. And so really, even though you are buying a property, say in a, in a foreign country, and some of the details might be different because of the rules there at a high level, it's really all those same steps. And then the post closing rules are also going to apply just like they would to real estate, domestic real estate that's owned by your solo 401k. So you hold on to the title documents as the trustee of the plan. All of the income and expenses related to your investment are going to flow in and out of the solo 401k account. You cannot use the property for personal use. You can't work on the property, right? If there's repairs that are needed. So all those same rules are still applicable even though the real estate is not domestic real estate, it's foreign real estate. So now that we've set that foundation, now let's flip forward and go over some practical considerations. 
And again, I'll stop and just remind folks to please like the video, please subscribe, please ask questions in the chat. Thank you so much for taking the time to join our webinar this week. So the first practical consideration and tip here is that typically you're looking at doing an all cash deal. So if you were to invest in real estate domestically, a lot of our clients are using their solo 401k funds together with non-recourse financing. So you can you cannot use recourse financing to buy real estate with your 401k, but you can use non-recourse financing. So that means in simple terms that the only recourse of the lender is to be able to go after the property. So you cannot personally guarantee it. You know, they're not going to be able to go after the plan. It's really just the property is going to be their collateral. And so that means you know that the terms are different, right? Because really their only recourse is that collateral. And so they're really just focused on the property, you know, so usually that means like shorter terms than a typical mortgage that you might get for your house, higher interest rate, et cetera. So even though there is a universe of specialty financial companies and lenders that will, that specialize in loaning money to people that are investing in real estate with their IRA or 401k, these lenders won't typically lend on foreign real estate transactions. So unless you can find a private non-recourse lender, you know, you're basically going to, the only option is going to be to do an all cash deal. So that's the typical practical result of that. So that means of course, that you've got to have enough money in your 401k account to, to really budget and cover all the expenses, whether it's, going to be closing expenses or repair expenses or just ongoing costs that are going to need to be that are going to be incurred until you get to the point where the investment is generating income to cover those costs. The next point here is that what we see is that sometimes a local bank is needed or really wanted. And so that is acceptable to have your 401k. Of course, it needs to be set up in the name of the 401k, or it could be a subsidiary. We'll talk about that as one of the last bullet points here, like a solo 401k LLC, but it needs to at least be under that solo 401k umbrella. In other words, you can't open up a bank account in your own name and have your 401k funds flow through that account. So if you do need a bank account in that foreign country, it needs to be a US domicile bank for example, like a Citibank. And then it would be just like any bank account that you have for your 401k. So it's set up under the name of the plan, under the tax ID number of the plan, et cetera. Our next point here is to consider the local rules and regulations. So I use a, sim a, a simple example with Mexico because of, you know, that's a popular place for US real estate investors to invest. So in Mexico, oftentimes a special trust, what they call a fideo comismo, is needed. It's it's just, it, think of it like a Mexican trust, essentially. So I mean, there's a little bit more details than that, but the point being that Mexican real estate rules and laws are going to require that if you have this foreign entity that's buying real estate in Mexico that it has to be held through this particular local entity or local structure so that there might be a parallel requirement in a different country. So all of that is ultimately acceptable as long as the ownership of that local entity flows to the 401k or an LLC that's owned by the 401k. So if it's being held in a Mexican trust, it's held for the benefit of your solo 401k or an LLC owned by your solo 401k. So really the same concepts apply. So oftentimes it's helpful to, you know, you're going to want to work with local real estate, legal and or tax advisors to help you navigate all those local rules, unless you're already familiar with them based on other investing experience, investing experience. The final practical consideration and tip on this slide, is the, uh, the idea that what we sometimes see is that having an LLC underneath your solo 401k can help 
alleviate some of the potential confusion and just going through the process. So you might be investing in a particular locale where there is some experience, say with the local bank or with the local title company with US LLCs, right? They may never, they may never have heard of a solo 401k, right? But they may have heard of a, a US LLC. So if you have a US LLC, a single member LLC, which is owned by your solo 401k, right? Where the sole member of that LLC is your solo 401k, and you are acting as the manager of that LLC, and it would have a separate EIN, a separate bank account, then use that, you know, so then you would invest your solo 401k funds that you want to invest in this property, this real estate investment into that LLC. And then the LLC may have the local bank account. The LLC would buy the property, say in that country. And so everything would flow in and out of the LLC, titles held in the LLC, et cetera, et cetera. So it is not required to buy the property in that fashion, but just practically that can be helpful in navigating those local rules and customs. So that's another good practical tip based on our experience. So again, I'll stop and let uh, you ask questions. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please like the video, please subscribe. We do have plenty of time to go through questions. Otherwise we'll flip forward to the next screen. So the final screen here is just how you can get more information about your situation. Uh, because of course, every situation is a little bit different. You can contact us at business at mysolo401k.net. You can call us at 1-800-489-7571. And we've got a question, so thank you so much. Can I rent the property to myself for a few weeks a year and I would pay fair market rate rent? Great question. So that goes back to the foundation. So the rules that apply to investing in real estate using your solo 401k, the general rules are going to apply the same, whether it's foreign real estate or domestic real estate. So that means that just like if you owned a property in, you know, Florida, you would, there's no exception for even paying fair market rent or even above market rent. You cannot use the property for personal use. No exception, even if you pay fair market rent. So good question. So it's going to apply the same, whether that property is in Florida or Mexico or some other foreign country. And thank you for the feedback. We appreciate everyone's time and joining. So we've got another question here. Can I invest my solo 401k in Costa Rica real estate? or are there country restrictions? So there are no country restrictions generally from a solo 401k perspective. So, I mean, there might be some restrictions based on, based either, there might be some rules in certain countries that make it difficult, right? Number one. Number two, of course, generally speaking, if you're talking about investing in a country that is on like the terrorist watch list, there's probably going to be other issues, bigger issues to consider. But generally speaking, yes, you could invest in Costa Rica, Mexico. I mean, a lot of the common places that U.S. real estate investors are investing in. Another co couple questions. Thank you so much for asking. So what are the tax implications of foreign real estate income? Great question. So from a... Um, from a 401k perspective, what's great about it using your solo 401k is that the income is going to be uh, tax deferred, whether you're talking about investing in Florida or whether you're talking about investing in Costa Rica or Mexico, wherever the case may be. So, but there are considerations in terms of those local taxes. Right. So you might have a property in Florida or Michigan or whatever the case may be where you have to pay property tax. Right. So your 401k is obligated to pay that property tax. So. There might be local taxes that are going to apply. So that's where you really want to. That's where it's really helpful to work with your local real estate 
advisor, whether it's tax or legal, to help you understand because those local tax authorities are probably not going to care essentially in blunt terms that you own it through a tax shelter in the U.S. So hopefully that helps answer your good question there. And another question, can I rent to a family member? Good question. So that goes back again to the, the, the basic concepts that it depends on whether or not, oh, and we have a follow up question. So I meant income tax. So if we're talking about US taxes, that's tax, the income is tax deferred. If we're talking about foreign taxes imposed by the foreign authority, it depends on those local tax rules. I would say the analogy is the property tax rules that might apply when investing in a certain state in the US. Hopefully that answers your good question. Let me know if it doesn't. And then so back to the follow-up question about can I rent to a family member? Well, it depends. So you cannot rent to what's considered to be a disqualified person. So a disqualified person is going to be a spouse, a parent, a child, so people up and down the family tree. So siblings, cousins, people that are parallel on the family tree are not considered to be disqualified persons. So of course, you want to make sure that when you're renting to say your brother, right, that your brother is not getting a sweetheart deal, right? So your brother would need to pay fair market rent based on the condition of the property, you know, what you can rent it to somebody else. Another good follow-up question here about selling my existing vacation home located in Belize. Can I sell it to the solo 401k owned LLC? goes the great question thank you so much for these good questions so the in short the answer is no so i understand that you're saying that you have a solo 401k which is the sole member of an llc and that you all already own a vacation home in your own name located in belize and you want to sell that vacation home to your solo 401k so the answer is no so that's just like if you owned a vacation home in michigan or Florida or North Carolina, you can't have a transaction between yourself or an entity that you own, or back to the other question, a your parent or child or spouse or an entity that those individuals own and your 401k. So even if you are paying a below market rent, you know, even if it's a good deal for your 401k, there is no exception to that prohibited transaction. That would amount to a prohibited transaction because it's a transaction between your 401k and a disqualified person. So no, you cannot. Good questions. So again, I'll just uh, thank everyone for all the good questions and the time joining. Please contact us at business at mysolo401k.net or you can call us at 1-800-489-7571. Please like this video and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks again for joining. Everyone have a great day. Take care.